Hi everyone, welcome to CGTN. I'm Yang Jinghao, live streaming from Sichuan Banna, a tropical region bordering Laos and Myanmar in southwest China's Sichuan province. Uh, in southwest China's Yunnan province, sorry. I'm now, right now, in a small village in, uh, called Hebian, which can be literally translated as a riverside. Uh, actually, uh, for, uh, for quite a long time, this small village uh, inhabited by ethnic Yao people uh, have been admired in deep poverty due to its uh, poor infrastructure and poor uh, transportation. And in recent years, due to special uh, poverty alleviation program uh, led by Mr. Li Xiaoyun, a professor from China Agriculture University, uh, great changes have taken place here. Uh, actually, from here, we can see uh, this village is actually is uh, very beautiful with uh, very well-equipped houses. And uh, today uh, we will show you around this uh, small village. Uh, and I'm very glad to be joined by two special guests, uh, Miss Xu Jing and Miss Ji Lan Lan. Uh, Hello. They, uh, they will share with us um, more stories about behind this program and uh, they will tell us more about this village. Uh, welcome you both. Uh, how about we say hello to our viewers okay. and uh, briefly introducing yourselves. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Xu Jing. I'm from China Agricultural University. Um, because today, Professor Li Xiaoyun, our team leader, is not here. So me and Lan Lan, um, we're happy to have this opportunity to take you to this village and to tell you the story of how this village getting out of poverty. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Lan Lan. I'm doing my PhD in Development Studies at China Agricultural University. And welcome to Hebian Village. And later on, we will lead you to have a virtual visit to this village. Yeah, I welcome you both. I know that uh, both of you are members of uh, Professor Lee's team yes. for this uh, program, right? Mm. And I know that you are very familiar with this uh, village, Hebian Village, and you are very you are acquainted with almost every villager here. So let me start with you, uh, Mr. Okay. Xu Jing. Uh, what was this village like when you first came here before this program started? Okay, actually, uh, I was here. I came here in late 2015. And actually, at that time, the, the, the project of poverty reduction in this village has just got started. So when I came here, there was no... Uh, no paved road, so it's, it, it was very hard for us to get into this mm. village. There is a very bumpy road, eight kilometers long, uh, that leads to this village. And, and when we get into this village, oh, we see a lot of soil. We, we, we cannot see so much green like we see today. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's the first impression we have when, when I just got here some six years ago. So it's very poor and people, the pigs, chickens are running here and there. <laughs> so, so we cannot you, imagine. You Shocked, right? Yeah, I was okay. shocked. Actually, we prepared a short video about how this small village used to be like. Uh, let's uh, just take a look. Actually, uh, I was born and grew up also in a, a small village in Yunnan province, but I was also shocked when I saw this picture. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rarely seen, yeah. yeah Even in 2015, there's still such a poor village. Yes. So uh, how about you guys being our guide and show us around a little bit this okay. village? Okay, sure, yeah. sure. yes. Sure. Let's go around the village. Okay. So uh, we know that the, actually this poverty reduction program was called uh, an experiment in Hebian village. So uh, 
Ms. Chi, uh, how, how do we understand, why do we call it an experiment, call this program a, an experiment? Um, actually, at the very beginning, Professor mm. Li Xiaoyun, he has no idea about the holistic project, uh, what the project will look like in this village. So he actually take uh, doing by learning uh, during all this process and uh, doing the construction and also the project little by little and then conclude uh, the experiences and mm -hmm. then upgrade into a new ideas. So we call it an experiment. So how is it different from other poverty reduction approaches, poverty reduction initiatives? Maybe, okay. Should you yeah. Uh, because for the past like eight, eight years, China has had this massive poverty reduction campaign yes. everywhere, uh, in every poor of this country. Yeah. Uh, but what happened here is different from what happened elsewhere. Uh, if, if you go to another poverty reduction village, uh, we also can see people's houses are being rented. They have new houses and also their li livelihoods are being improved. Come are getting better, but here uh, we have some... Uh, it's very different from elsewhere. People are still staying in this village. It's, this is a village. So, and this village is also have this uh, uh, very nice natural endowment. It is backed mm -hmm. behind this, this rainforest. So we are thinking of taking advantage of these resources. As people, it has a rainforest. It has natural resources. It also has some ethnic culture resources. So we are starting to to combine what the village has uh, to uh, with what we can offer. So we are thinking of introducing here the guest room uh, here Yao Mama's guest room. So yeah. it can generate income for the for the uh, village households, and the people can still stay here. So they don't need to go out. They can stay here and make money. So that's more easy for them. And also they have better houses. That's quite a different way of yes. helping people out of poverty, actually, right? Mentioning rainforest, actually from here we can see that actually this small village is just surrounded yes. by dense forests like this. It's very beautiful. Do you guys think that actually this is a natural advantage for this small village? Sure, it is a natural advantage of this small yeah. village. It has very good air. The oxygen level is very high. When, yeah. we, when we come here, we only need to sleep like five, six hours per day. <laughs> Not like we, we are in Beijing, we need yeah. eight hours. And we still, we still feel we are sleepy. Yeah. Actually, from here, we can also see uh, their very beautiful houses. Yes. It's, th these are all yeah, this did a build in recent years, right? Yes. Starting the, after the, the uh, program starting kicked off. Starting in 2015, 2016, and, mm. and almost uh, now we have like 47 such uh, guest rooms mm. in, in, in this village's houses. It's built in guest mm. rooms in their new houses. And we can see it's a traditional Yao style wooden house. Actually, we, we learned from the Dai mm. people, another es <laughs> ethnic groups, oh. because they have this, you know, this is very unique. They yes. have this uh, stilt style. So we see those posts. It can avoid the, avoid the insects, avoid the ants, ah. avoid snakes, and also avoid the moisture. Yes. Ah. Lala, how, how about you? Uh, have you ever seen such, such a house before you came to Hebian village? Um, what, what impressed you most? Yeah, I actually, mean, in terms of actually my house? first visit to Hebian village yeah. was quite late in 2018. And uh, I organized a conference called ASEAN Plus Three mm -hmm. uh, conference, which brings all the villager leaders and agricultural officials from Southeast Asia and also South Asia country mm -hmm. to Hebian village mm -hmm. to to share our, our experiences in rural revitalization and mm -hmm. also poverty reduction. Uh, so I was very impressed about uh, uh, about the houses, the the living condition. Here, because uh, before coming here, I my imagination about Herbian village is about it's kind of like uh, very poor but improved a little bit, yeah. but not very modernized yeah. and uh, uh, bright, mm. and uh, people are living uh, very comfortable uh, houses. Yeah. Actually, they are still wooden structure, right? But it's a lot better in terms of like its equipment. 
right? In internal decoration, right? It's, yeah, uh, it's sure. It's much improved. Yeah, sure. We we resources. raised a, uh, we raised a three million RMB during 2017 mm -hmm. to up decoration of the Yao mm. Mama's uh, guest room. Maybe we can visit some of them later, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, we can see that even a bar here. Yeah, I was surprised actually when I first arrived here th several days ago. There even, there's even a bar in such a small village, yes. right? It's okay. also a window that we can... Yeah, know. you should <laughs> oh, go to a... the Lava uh, He's the, the bar. owner of this... Yes. So you can... Actually, he just uh, took advantage of this space to open such a bar here which actually provides a good opportunity for visitors, yes. right? To yes. get together and to come here. Yeah, it's not that fancy, as fancy as those in big it cities, is. maybe. But yeah. it's, it's, it's very popular, Yeah, very <laughs> especially popular. among our foreign guests, foreign visitors. Yeah, I think so. Actually, <laughs> yes. during the past few days, I also got some drinks with my colleagues every night here. Yeah, very cozy. Yeah, very cozy. Yeah. <laughs> They drink beers, and they chat. Next to this bar is a convenience store. Was there such a shop before, uh, I mean, the, 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 before the program started? Was there such a convenience store here? Uh, they, have a, they, have a, they, they didn't have let's, such let's, a convenience yeah, store out. here. Let's check it out. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of daily yes, necessities. Daily necessities, yeah. yes. And the kids like the shop very much. Every day they came to the shop to buy some <laughs> snacks. Yes, and, and we can see that we can even use mobile payment. Yes. Right? Very convenient. Yes. Let's move on. Okay. Do we need, uh, do we need to the conference room? Oh, the, we just the, show them. That, that, what's that room oh, that, used? That is a conference room, actually. Actually, conference room. Yeah, conference. Because we have these uh, modern guest rooms, we also need to have a conference room so we can accommodate meetings. We can hold meetings here. Oh, you just mentioned that yes. during past years you held yes. Yes. some ASEAN high level meetings. Conferences. Yeah, like yeah. ASEAN. Yeah, ASEAN conferences. plus three conferences. Yeah. And also on uh, China African Agricultural Cooperation conferences as well. So guests from abroad also attended. Yeah, these. yeah. They are from okay. African countries and also Asian countries. So for quite a long time, actually, this village was isolated from the outside world. But in recent years, international conferences have been held here. That's yeah. a big change, I think. Yeah, that's a big change. And uh, also, uh, Hebian, uh, Hebian villagers, uh, uh, it's quite a, a learning process for them to, to communicate with outsiders. They are from yeah. different countries and different cultures. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for them. Yes. Right? Yes. So... Actually, uh, Professor Li Xiaoyun used to say uh, this village, a Hebian village, was stuck in the poverty trap, right? Yeah, for quite a long time. Trap, poverty trap, yeah. yeah. So, what is so-called poverty trap? Uh, okay, of, before we, okay. yeah, we, 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 okay. we can have a look yeah, at the map. We can take a map. look at this sketch map of yes. the Hebian village. How many households? Uh, there in this village. We have 57 households 57. in this village, mm -hmm. 206 six people. Now we may have two new members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost uh, each family has yes. guest rooms right now, right? Uh, Almost. Yeah, most of them mm. have guest rooms. Mm. Some may have two to three even. <laughs> actually, from this map, we can see that Actually, this village is very small, yes. right? But the, right now, they have almost everything. Not every necessary facilities, right? Yes. For example, there's a basketball, basketball field, yes. right? And also we have a washroom. Yeah, public yes. toilet and yes. also collective uh, Collective pixty, pixty yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, back to what we mentioned just now. So what, what is so-called 
of the trap. So how's the situation six years ago? What started this program? Uh, actually, years ago, when you uh, come into this village, you can see that there's no rich people. Everybody mm -hmm. was equally poor, mm -hmm. and and also the the features of their uh, uh, is that they have very, their expenditure is very high. Income is very limited because mm -hmm. the the villagers they used to uh, grow the sugar cane, and also they they collect uh, the herbal medicine from the rainforest, mm -hmm. and also sometimes may, they may uh, they may. Do some non-farm work uh, nearby the village, mm -hmm. so that's the main sources uh, mm -hmm. of their income. But that's very limited. Uh, however, their consumption is very modern style. They mm -hmm. have to pay their doctors' bills, their their children's uh, education bills, and also um, uh, uh, and also some other consumptions because the village uh, they had to take this eight kilometer long way to go outside, so they have to buy a motorcycle. Yeah. So the motorcycle, the, the, the fuels, the transportation fees is also mm. very high. So, so almost each family was in heavily in debt, right? In debt, yeah. yes. And they don't have stable source of income, right? Yes, and the, their yeah. income source is very unstable because mm -hmm. sometimes the uh, elephants come here, come to the village. They just <laughs> oh, damage right, the sugar right, cane, right. the banana. Mentioning this, I think uh, one interesting thing that is that, yeah, in recent years, yeah. In recent yes. What the stars, I uh, think it's a herd of Asian elephants. Right. Yeah. Yes. They, they were traveling, they were traveling northward. Oh, yes. Uh, close to the capital city of Kunming, of Yunnan province. Yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, these herd of elephants just are uh, just from rainforests yeah, like this, from right? Yeah, from rainforests, yes. Just from Xichuan. Their yes. original habitat is just in Xichuan, Ban Na. Yes. Sometimes elephants also from Laos, right. <laughs> because it's bordering Laos. So I just mentioned that yeah. actually some wild Asian elephants often yeah. came, come to the village. Because the uh, elephants, they like eating bananas and also sugar, sugar cane, cane, so they always the corns, come. Right? There's a herd of elephants, they are living around. Yeah. Every year we can see them coming. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's interesting, yeah. but it's also dangerous, actually. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty uh, dangerous, but uh, especially during the pandemic, people mm. are in, uh, the cities are on lockdown and people yeah. have to do the quarantine, yeah. but the elephants, they migrate without any visa and uh, they don't have to do the <laughs> quarantine and uh, they don't have to uh, uh, apply for the, for the policies. Yeah, I know that actually the elephants have caused a lot of damage yeah. to to, to local villagers, yeah, the but yeah. fortunately, I learned that actually the provincial government has mm -hmm. some preferential policies. Mm -hmm. They buy a kind of insurance for uh, yes. local farmers, yes. right? Yeah. They, yeah. So the farmers would get compensated <laughs> yeah. when yeah. The, the elephants cause trouble, yes. right? Yeah. We're now on a bridge, oh, right? On a bridge, yes. Of river, it's just flowing through this village. So I'm wondering if this is why this village oh. is called Hebie Riverside. Yes, you got it right. <laughs> yeah, you got it right. But but the village, I think this is mm. the only thing in this village has never changed uh. because all of the houses they are rebuilt. The village remain the same. It's the as before. only thing that remains yeah. unchanged, yeah. right? Yes, wow. Yes. Yeah. A very. Small but beautiful village. So, uh, back to uh, 2015 when Professor Lee just initiated this program. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering if all villagers are in favor of his idea, like build wooden houses for them <laughs> and uh, like. Yeah, open guest rooms in their own houses. Are all, are all villagers in favor of such an idea support Mr. Lee's idea? Yeah, I think idea. Uh, at the very beginning, uh -huh. some of the villagers they they uh, they think what stands for modernization is the brick house mm -hmm. uh, the house made by bricks uh -huh. so they 
they were kind of resistant in building the wooden house, mm -hmm. and they haven't yet acknowledged or recognized the advantages they have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, Professor Li Xiaoyun took some time to pursue it, uh, oh. to to convince the villagers to to agree in building the wooden houses. Okay. So, where are we now? Okay, now we are in front of the. Uh, Xiao Yun Zhuping, Action Against Poverty uh, Office. Office. Actually, so, it's the NGO founded okay. by Professor Li Xiaoyun to facilitate ah. this program, actually, in the beginning mm -hmm. for this project. Uh, because uh, our university is in Beijing, so we have to have a base here uh, mm -hmm. to promote this project. It's another uh, cooperative, Rainforest. Oh, it's also the office. Yeah, it's a cooperative. It's cooperative. Yes, uh, it's a village. How about we take another okay. look at yeah. This office. Okay. Okay. Wow, there are a lot of pictures yes. here. Well, you can yeah. start from here. Yeah, that yeah. shows the the Actually, development uh, process uh, in the past five six years. Panoramic view yes. of this village. It's Very beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, 2018, 2019. Uh, now and it's ah, before that's how, previous yeah how the yes. village used oh. to be like yes. as we just yeah that's a road leading leading the village yeah. to the outside world so <laughs> it's impossible to travel during rainy days uh, is this was this just the only road leading to this village before? yeah that's the only road yeah. wow. there's no other way out and this yes this yeah. the residence right yeah this the where they used to live yeah, yeah, where they used to live. Yeah, the conditions uh, were very poor. And they have no kitchens. They just use oh. this to boil water, ah. to cook things. And you can see the livestock, the pigs are running everywhere. They are almost living under the same roof with the house owners. Oh, from, uh, we just saw, oh, from the, the sketch map, we just saw that they see yeah. collective big yeah. seed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the pigs just like live together with with people. people yes. Right? Yes. Wow. Uh, that's <laughs> so. That's why we need this collective yeah. pig because we have this new industry. We have guest visitors. Mm. <laughs> this is Professor Lee mm. who is making plans together. That's us. Uh, oh, that's uh, mm. that's our design. So you have work <laughs> close. Professor Lee, right during the past few years, so why? Why did Professor decide to experiment such a program in this remote village? Yeah, I think. You don't cut. Yeah, that's a that's quite a long story actually. Long story. Because actually, uh, mm. Professor Lee, because we are from our mm. main job is to do research, but Professor Lee thought. <laughs> doesn't want to be a you know ordinary researcher he wants to do something he actually he he is very practical he is very down to earth he wants to make things happen and also one uh, focus of our research is poverty reduction so he's thinking maybe we can do something and uh, during this whole process we can also make some research. Yeah. so that's what he sort of here mm -hmm. The office for uh, the agricultural cooperative. Yes. That's a CFO. 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 Mr. Li Jing. So, you He's mainly dealing with the financial stuff, right? Issuing invoices. Also, taxes, paying taxes. Okay. Mm. Nice. So, uh, could you tell us something about this cooperative? Oh. What's the cooperative about? Yeah, this cooperative. Why, why, why do we set up cooperative? Uh, because this poverty reduction program is much of a you know development intervention project. Finally, in the end, we have to leave because we are outsiders. We mm -hmm. cannot stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forever. So they have to have their internal capacities. 
So that's why we are thinking they should have their own organization to manage, to operate all this new industry business and to also provide public service for this village. Uh. So we are, we, we are encouraging them to establish this cooperative so oh. they can you know, manage the whole industry, the whole yeah. village. So the, in the long run, you mean the, the, the whole village, the gas rooms or other industries will be like managed by themselves, right? Yeah, by On themselves. Their own. They have mm. to. Okay. So, so where are we going now? The kindergarten <laughs> of the Herbian it's village. The kindergarten. We also have some students from CAU, from our university. Yeah. So during you, the you summer... Like you can ask volunteers yeah. here? Yes. Yeah. They are teaching students English. Yeah. So uh, you think it's summer vacation time. So why are the kids, these kids are still learning here, having classes here? Yeah, actually, basically every summer and winter time, the students and the professors from China Agricultural University, they will travel to this village and stay here. So we take advantage of the human capital, like students from CAU, and she can be a volunteer teaching English in this class. And the kids from the village, they can learn something different. So, like, she's a student from... CEU, yeah, right? yeah, China she's Wei Xuan from China Agricultural University. If we can talk a little bit with her. Yeah, sure. She's very passionate. Sorry, sorry, sorry to dis disturb you guys. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. So tell us, what are you teaching? I'm teaching kids? this uh, um, language, English, to uh. these children. And uh, these are colors uh. and fruit and uh, other easy words. Lana told me that you are actually a student from uh, yeah, China Agricultural Agriculture. University. Yes, right? I am. So you're working here as a volunteer, actually? Yes, yes, so I am. So is this your first time to visit Hebian Village? Uh, it's, uh, it's my second time. Second time. Yeah, I, I, I was here in the winter of 2021. So how do you like this village? Um, what impressed you? Most. Uh, do you like this village? Yes, yes. Yeah. What impressed you most? I think it's the children and mm. the power um, among them. Because mm. when I talk to them and I teach them words, they will um, present um, mm. enthusiasm mm -hmm. and their power inside their little mm. bodies. Yeah. yeah. We know that actually uh, this small village has been... Uh, lifted out of poverty, right? It's seeking better development. So do you think education is important in this process? I mean... Yes, yes it is. Yes. Why? Um, because um, it is education which can improve the, mm. the children. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, is, what is in this village is children because they are the future masters of this village. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think um, if they can go outside mm -hmm. and uh, learn something and go back to the village, yeah. they will be the, the leaders of the mm -hmm. develop, village development. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lana, actually, I know that most of the villagers here actually received very late education, right? Yeah, sure. Actually, this is very important cause for their poverty, I think. Yeah, I think the early education can serve as a one of the approaches mm. to break the cycle of poverty. Yeah. And they can, uh, according to the children who receive early education, they are more likely to to attend the high school, uh, to attend colleges, mm. to to entirely reshape their, their entire life. Yes, yeah. yes. So as she just said, the children are just the future. 小朋友们,你们喜欢,老师给你们上课吗? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> bye bye, see you, thank you. The kids said they like, yeah, such classes, English classes given by the volunteer. Let's continue.
sure? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, we just talked a lot about the like the, the environment of this village, yeah, right? Uh, the, the the overall environment has greatly changed in the past during the past few years. So how about people? Have people also changed according to your observation during the past few years? Are there any changes happening? A it might be a very complicated mm -hmm. topic, but I can, uh, I can talk about some of my observations. Yeah. Like most of the villagers, they are um, uh, during twenties to forties. Mm -hmm. uh, they have changed their mindset. Either okay. the guest rooms are very important for income generation, and uh, some of them already completely gave up farming on mm -hmm. their land. And they uh, simply rely on the Yao Mama's guest room because mm -hmm. they think such kind of new industry lot of cashes and uh, income for their family. And uh, very few people, they decided to work as uh, migrant laborers in, uh, in other cities or mm -hmm. even outside of Yunnan provi mm -hmm. provinces. They sometimes... Yeah. From time to time, they are doing odd jobs around this village, maybe in the township. But mm -hmm. most of the time, they they choose to stay in this village to mm -hmm. to to, con uh, to maintain their guest rooms and uh, provide the services for the for the visitors. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, for the education perspective, uh, most of the kids they they are able to go to school. Because once the family increases their income, and they are able to the the uh, living expenses for for their kids uh, who are in school mm. uh, who need the the life expenses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Professor Xu Jing can continue to elaborate more. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. May has his own observation, and I think. The people, they are more receptive to the outside, and oh. they they want to learn things now. They want technique, that technique. A lot of people in this village, they have driving license. Years, on to cars, they want to learn to go to the outside to see. Also, some uh, some villagers they came to Beijing. <laughs> we provided, and also the foundations. Mm -hmm. Supporting uh, villagers, households, houses.
Sorry for the bad internet connection. So, uh, uh, Miss G and Miss Xu are now at a at a old house, right? Yeah. Tell us something about this house. So this is the old house of Pan Fa Rong. Mm -hmm. He used to live alone in this house with his pigs. You can see the pigs is living around this house, and the house only has. Uh, one floor. There's no two floors houses here. Now he moved the old one to the new one. Oh, you can see from here. Yeah, house. this is his oh. new house. Living alone, but he's improving quite a lot of his living conditions. Yeah, so, so most of the villagers used to live in like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Most of the villagers living mm. in this kind of house. Wow. Big difference. It's quite impressive. Okay. So we can take steps uh -huh. up there to the where Professor Lee used to be living ah. and working from 2015 so how, to how 2017. Has, uh, Professor Lee stayed here. Uh, he used to be staying here from 2015 to 2017 uh -huh. until the new houses have been built. So he moved from the old offices to a new one. Mm -hmm. And we can see there's some tropical fruits along the way, right? Pomelos. And uh, during the past day, past few days, I've seen a lot of different fruits around the villagers' houses. Oh, this is just the This is the, house the old office, yeah. Where Professor Lee used to be living uh, for lived almost and three years. Wow. Before we had the guest rooms. Yeah. He just lived here. So actually you can see from the appearance there's a window out there because Professor Lee wants to wanted to bring light to ah. the houses. So he asked the villagers to, to build this wooden house for him to stay here. So actually most of the wooden shelters for the villagers don't didn't even have a window, right? No, they don't have. There's no light coming from outside. Very dark uh, inside. So one of the modernity that in, in the idea of the experiment is to bring light into the house. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we know that China launched a nationwide uh, drive to eradicate extreme poverty around 2013 and during this process actually uh, millions of farmers in poor areas have uh, been supported have been assisted by local governments right but in professor lee's experiment villagers in hebian uh, they were motivated motivated uh, to to be active participants of, in this campaign, right? They're not just passive yes. recipients of assistance, right? Yes, they're very so active. So what are the challenges in this process? Uh, actually, this is also a long story a here. Long story and again. actually <laughs> one thing that can show the uh, villagers are active is that everybody, they are involved in the construction of the new houses. They uh -huh. input their labor. They build their, their new houses. Uh -huh. And also, they also learned from this process. Uh, some of them have become, you know, good house makers. They even go to other villages to build houses uh, for others. They make money from that. So it's also a capacity building process during this, this whole poverty reduction process. And, 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 and a particular challenge is that because China's... Uh, projects, uh, China's mm -hmm. development programs are largely project-based. So, you know, budget for this project cannot be used for other purposes. So right. it's very hard when we have so many projects, but we want to do one thing. You mm. know, it's very hard to integrate all the different uh, financial resources mm -hmm. together to, to, into a package program to do mm -hmm. this. So that's also one thing that we get particular support from the local government because mm -hmm. the local government, they say, OK, we have this um, public, we have this government funding for poverty reduction and we have this funding from this project, that funding from, from that project. And you can integrate all those different fundings together, you know, right. to do what 
the villagers need to, to improve their lives. Yes. We, we just uh, talked a lot about the guest rooms. Yes. I'm very quite curious about how oh, is it, look it looks like. like. Right. Yeah. How about we... Yeah, we can get inside. Spot. Take a look. Yeah, yeah. Just, this is the, our viewers are also curious yeah. about how guest rooms in s such a village yeah. look like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shou Li is the uh, owner is, of this this room, Shou this right? house. Yes. Ah. He's also the director for women in this village. Ah. <laughs> yeah, how many guest rooms do you have? There is one guest room. Just one guest room. Uh, you, 从二零一六年开始建的吧这个嗯一个开始就是有客人住大概什么时候也是二零一六年啊呀去还对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应开始对应
also provide them some training. Training, right? yeah. yeah, training. Especially we get the support from Hua Zhu, which is affiliated to to uh, Lü Yue Ji Tuan, mm-hmm. and they provide the capacity building for the cooperative, yes. but also uh, for the villagers mm-hmm. to how to uh, how to do a appropriate housekeeping. Housekeeping, mm-hmm. wow. and also that's important. I think also that's they help important. help the village to develop uh, the menus. <laughs> Okay. Standard menu. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that the decoration of this this house is beautiful, right? Yeah. Okay, he's, he's just the house owner. So. This is the CEO of the cooperative. CEO of the cooperative, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Okay. 你好,你好,怎么称呼?我姓周,叫周志学. Mm. Mr. Zhou Zhishue, so you are the house owner, right? 你是这个房子的主人,对吧? Show us around your beautiful house. Wow, it's this it's different. so different. <laughs> yeah. So modernized. So I think it's it's been upgraded, right? Yes, it's it's it's, it's a upgraded. new one actually. Just finished the upgrading. Oh, you just finished the decoration, the upgrading in in uh Okay, several months ago. So why? Why do you want to build this house? The old house was not good. Not good. Yes, now it's not good. So he said the, the decoration was not that good. He, he, he thought the, the decoration was not that good. So he just upgraded almost everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. The modern kitchen, modern and also kitchen, you can right. see the, the the window, the standing window. Yeah. Yeah. Three, Three floors. floors. Oh, I was so surprised okay. that yes. there see such a modern yeah, that's apartment. A... Yeah, and this. Remote village, yeah. It's just a good example of combining traditional Yao style, yes, right, yeah. with modern, modern facilities. Yes. This is the bedroom. This is one one room, one open room, but there's another one. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I think, uh, 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 Everything's changing his village in, in terms of both the environment and also the villagers, like their lifestyle and their mindset. Yeah, actually, as Lana just shared shared with us. Yeah. 那你觉得就是说咱们运营这个客房，这个对咱们这个村子的这个，你作为一个这个 manager of the cooperative， 你觉得这个？呃，就是这个客房这一块，对这个咱们村民的收入啊，他们生活影响大吗？收入是非常大的，嗯，对，然后影响也非常大。这收入给村民带来、嗯，可能在这几年吧，嗯，他在客房的收入是，在村里是主主要的来源，嗯，哎 ，So， 呃、uh, ，He said that the income from the 呃、uh, guest rooms has become a、um, Actually, a major source of the local family's income. So, as a, the manager of the agricultural cooperative, you have to be、uh, responsible for the management, for the operation, overall management of this gas rooms. I think, right? You, you, 就是作为这个呃 CEO, CEO, 你要去负责。整个的管理工作吧，对吧？对对对。你觉得挑战大吗 ？Do you think it's a big challenge？ 很大的，对，嗯，非常大。因为你这整个村基本上都是嗯亲戚嗯，然后我年龄也比较小，嗯、然后你管到长者的话
很难。对。OK， is that his the many people are relatives actually in this village, yeah, right? Yeah. And he has a young man, yes, so he、right. he feels pressure、yeah. in his daily management. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a, yeah, very beautiful apartment.、Yeah. I think this, this is, is one very, of the. Yeah, this is a very cozy. Yes,、uh, we can yes. sit down here to have a tea and to enjoy the sunset. I、yes. think it's it's very popular. This、yeah. guest room is very popular for visitors with visitors. <clears throat> I think I guess this is one of the best in, yeah, this, in the village. Yeah,、right? so far. So thank far. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we will see more guest rooms like this in the coming years, right? Yeah, in the、yes. coming years.、Mm -hmm. Especially in the end of the year, I think there were another three houses to be upgraded. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the renovation is ongoing. Actually, yeah. <laughs> At the、so、end of why, the year, we have more. Why do you decide to upgrade the 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 guest rooms? Actually, when I Uh, went to、okay? oh. the 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 one, the guest、yeah. room of Shou Li's, right?、Yes. I think that's what, that one is already very good.、Uh, but actually, <laughs> actually, because it's very in a very remote places here,、mm -hmm. so the the guest room price cannot be so high.、Mm -hmm. So、yeah. and and also,、uh, not every day it receives visitors here. So we want to improve their income more dramatically. <laughs> so that's why we have this modern guest rooms、uh, like. Uh, like the one we just saw right right now,、mm -hmm. so、uh, the price for that guest room is much higher than the one of the show lease.、Oh, <laughs> It's like、yeah. a suit, <laughs> like sweet, yes.、Mm. And so ju we just mentioned that actually the COVID nineteen pandemic has also posed impact to their business, right? Yes. Because maybe we have. We have restrictions、mm. on tourism, so、yeah. there are fewer tourists here. And so, what do you think can be a solution to this problem?、Uh, actually, we 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 are also trying to solve this problem.、Mm -hmm. And one solution that the villagers already have is the diversification of their livelihoods,、mm -hmm. because previously they have a livelihood largely based on agriculture and farming. Uh, but since we have introduced this new project,、mm -hmm. there has been a trend of、uh, deagriculturalization.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when the pandemic came, you know, some people they they don't have so many visitors, so they have more time. So they start to、uh, go to, to go back、land. to agriculturalization.、Yeah. Um, so、yeah. <laughs> they have a very diversified livelihoods. So、mm -hmm. that constitutes some of their resilience to、mm -hmm. the pandemic shocks.、Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, from here we can see、yeah. their cornfields. Yeah, yeah the cornfields. <laughs> yes. So actually, apart from running their guest rooms, they're also doing farm work as before, right? Yes, right?、Mm. because、yeah. uh, this uh, year the this is a little flower, little, little flower, flower. <laughs> the prettiest girl in the village. <laughs> She's cute. This is, this is I noticed actually. I noticed that most of the kids. Can speak Putonghua,、yeah. uh, because I I learned that、uh, their parents or their grandparents, most of them just don't speak Mandarin Chinese or Putonghua.、Mm -hmm. They can only speak their Yao language, right? Yeah,、mm -hmm. okay, that's also so, the yeah, one change, the change、yeah. one of the many one changes of the, that happened since、mm -hmm. we introduced the program here,、mm -hmm. because they received. Many people from outside, so they started to learn Mandarin.、Mm -hmm. Professor Lee also emphasized this a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's important. So、yeah. shall we? Oh, yeah, we can take a look, and this is where this I'm is staying where here、oh, really? in this village. Oh, yeah. So this is a... Thank you. Yeah, so this is Ila, and、oh, she's、Nihau. from Laos.、Nihau. Oh, you're from Laos. Yeah,、mm -hmm. she's the mother of Xiaohua Little Flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah,、uh, I think last year when I visited Hebian Village,、uh -huh. she can speak very limited Mandarin. And now this year, I can communicate with Ila very、uh, fluently. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you, your this house, living one way, how good? Good. 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 Good.
，我我自己不错，自己打草。啊、哦，非常好，非常好。<笑> yeah, she has one guest room, and、uh, she just design, right? Decorate and clean.、Yeah. And she's mainly she responsible she, she for the everything. housekeeping.、Yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah. Wow, have a spacious so, one. Yeah. Welcome to this room. <laughs> so、uh, you've been living in this room during the past. Yeah, yeah.、Mm -hmm. I'm I'm staying、mm -hmm. here. Right. Actually, this is the one when I first time visited Hebian Chun. Uh, I stay in this same room、uh, as well. In back so in you walk this room yeah, back in 2018. Ah,、oh. yeah. Very lovely, yeah. Lovely decorations, yeah. The paintings, stick like the paintings. <sighs> you can see that each house、uh, guest room is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually,、uh, all of the guest rooms are designed by the villagers themselves. Yeah. What What's that? So actually,、uh, there is a balcony out there. Balcony. Yeah.、Uh -huh. Actually, in 2018, when I first time visited here and I stay here,、okay. I have no idea about what is the balcony. So、uh, th there was a night, and、uh, there there was a、uh, bird flying inside of my room and、uh, <laughs> standing still in, on my head. <laughs> Yeah, but actually, there's a door out there.、Oh, so check let's check out. Okay, let's check it out. Wow, that's nice view. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So welcome to the balcony. Oh,、Enjoy、the, the view is great. It's just great. We can get a panoramic view of the village from here, actually. Yeah, the banana trees, right? Pomelo trees. So actually, the tropical fruits are also an important source of income for them, maybe, right? Actually, the、yeah. the tropical fruits are are mainly for their daily uses.、Mm. Yeah,、oh. the daily nutrition.、Oh. Uh, they are not、uh, selling any kind of the、uh, tropical fruits. Except、yeah. uh, banana. <laughs> yeah, except the banana. banana. Yeah. yeah. So why not we take seat and、okay. uh, have、That's、some tea? That's a great idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Let's let me take off take my off shoes. shoes. Yeah. Oh, I love this balcony. <laughs> That's a great place to like have a cup of tea and read some books here, right? Do some thinking, maybe. Yeah, do some thinking, deep thinking. Deep thinking. Yeah. yeah. So we just met、uh, some of the women in this village. They, as you just introduced, they're doing everything, right? The Even design the decoration of the rooms and do cleaning,、yeah. and also even participated in the construction of the houses.、Yeah. So, actually, women has played a very important role、yeah. in the poverty alleviation、yeah. campaign. Right?、Yeah. How do you think of their role? Because women is a very important actor、mm. in poverty reduction. Because、mm. usually women are more prone to to poverty. So that's also、oh, one focus of our program design. So our program,、uh, in its original design, it's it's gender sensitive.、Mm -hmm. That's why we are making use of this uh, uh, house space uh, inside the house to generate more income for women. Because women, women, they can stay at their home, they can take care of their family, but they can do some simple housework and they can generate money. So it's very,、uh, it's very good for them. It has generated. A lot of benefits、uh, for women. They don't need to go outside to be the migrant workers. So I think that's also one merit of this program, both、yes. probably pro poor and also pro women.、Mm -hmm. So do you think that this experiment or this mode of poverty reduction 
we copy it or apply to other rural areas in poverty. Yeah, that's also what we want to do, but mm. it's it, it's going to be a huge challenge to just simply copy one model to elsewhere because the conditions are very different. Mm -hmm. We can see that this village has the rainforest, but yeah. elsewhere they may not have this. Yeah, yeah. So it's a particular, you know, advantage of this village. They have rainforests, they have ethnic Yao culture, yeah, right? Yeah, culture. Yeah, everything yeah. is unique. Yeah, yeah. it's unique, but mm. it also has its disadvantages. For example, it's very remote. It's very far from the metropolitan cities. So it's their disadvantage. Mm. <laughs> So, so mm. but but models cannot be copied, but actually some some principles or some thoughts, yeah. some some clues can be copied, yeah, can yeah. be drawn on for other for other places. Yeah, people can yes get inspiration inspiration from this yes experiment from this pro program. Actually, as far as I know, uh, your team led by Professor Li yes. Xiaoyun has also also have some programs in Africa, right? Yes. Can you tell us something okay. about that? Actually, we have a lot of programs. What are you doing in, the African, in African countries? Uh, we are doing a little bit similar things, but the process is a, uh, a lot slower than oh. what happened here. In Tanzania, we are introducing Chinese labor-intensive agricultural technology there because in Tanzania, in Morogoro region of Tanzania, they grow crops, they grow maize, what we call what we call it, but their spacing of the crops are very wide. Uh -huh. so, and also we try to narrow their spacing of the crops and mm -hmm. also we, we teach them Chinese technologies. You have to do the weeding, <laughs> you have to, you know, use some organic fertilizers that increases the output, the uh -huh. yield of the maize crops a mm -hmm. lot and that generates more income for the local farmers. At the same time we are trying to introduce Introduce the Chinese uh, experience of a government's role in supporting agriculture there. Mm. So we are also uh, help support the capacity building of the local okay. governments in Tanzania. We we even take them, the Tanzania officials here to this vill village. Oh, to Hubian village. Yeah, to Hubian village. Mm. There's a peer learning process also happening here. Mm. Yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, mentioning the government role, how has Professor Lee has your team cooperated with the local government during the past years. Uh, do you have like very close cooperation? Yeah, we have very close ties with mm. the government uh, because the government has such a massive campaign on poverty reduction. It's happening in China. And the local mm. governments, national governments, they provide financial support. They also provide the officials. Uh, officials come to the village mm. to, to, to see what are needed mm. for poverty reduction. They will provide very, uh, very sufficient support, immediate support mm. for this village. And they are also recording what happened here, what experiences here. They are also helping us to, you know, to introduce experiences here to elsewhere. Mm. Actually, this village has been also been paid by, uh, uh, by many uh, state, uh, how to say, national leaders. Also the Minister for Poverty Reduction previous Minister for Public Reduction has came to this village ah. to visit. And he said, this is a very good Chinese model for yeah. public reduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, Lala, I think this, uh, this experiment, this program is actually, um, has integrated like resources from government and also other, like yeah, so, individuals, uh, individuals, organizations, yeah, social forces, companies. Yeah. Yeah. Universities, yeah, yeah, universities as well. Yeah. So it's a very special program, but the most, uh, one of the most important things is that the villagers themselves, right, as I just mentioned, they have to play a crucial role in this process, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what uh, Professor Lee has mm. attached the most importance to the subjectivity mm. of the farmers or or uh, of the villagers in this village they are uh, they have the ownership and uh, they have to rely on the, themselves in developing this village mm -hmm. I, I noticed that you, you have some yeah there are some books here it's yes. just written by professor lee right yeah this is newly published ending poverty yeah ending poverty what's it about it's about 
Wow. So as far as I know, Professor Lee is also an expert for like China's public liberation yeah. policy making, right? Yeah. Mm. And also uh, development studies. Yeah, and uh, I know that you're also having uh, doing some projects in some other parts of, of the province of the country, right? The, the, are they different? Uh, it's 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 based on different conditions okay. of the of the places. Mm. Currently, we have many projects uh, uh. starting in Yunnan province, mm. in, in Kunming. In Kunming, it's uh, it's a different model because mm. Kunming, uh, the villages nearby Kunming. Uh, it's very close to the metropolitan city, Kunming. Kunming is a huge city. So in that places, we are trying to uh, to draw the forces uh, of the of the cities, from the cities, like resources, mm. like people. Uh, we are trying to utilize the resources from the metropolitan city to support the villages' development. So that's mm. that's what we call uh, the the city-driven poverty reduction and the rural revitalization model. And in another places in in Nujiang, uh, which is uh, you know inhabited by the ethnic minority people, the Li Su people, they just right. came down from the hills, from the mm. mountains. So that's a that's a little bit different story. Mm. So that's what we, we we have a new model to integrate poverty reduction with uh, rural mm. revitalization because the development stage is quite low there. Yeah, it's speaking different. of rural revitalization, this is what the country is striving for, right? It's making effort, it's aiming for rural revitalization. So, uh, speaking of Hebian, in the long run, what do you expect the village to be in the future? Yeah, that's also what yeah. we want to see for, uh, for Hebian village, yeah. rural revitalization. Because after poverty reduction, you know, pov for poverty reduction, government input huge resources mm -hmm. to help it. But for rural revitalization, you have to have an internal dynamic to develop. So we are focusing uh, more on the soft elements mm. of the development for poverty reduction, the infrastructure. We build the roads, build the houses. But for rural revitalization, we give more emphasis uh, for the soft elements, the people's capacities, uh, the governance structures, how to manage mm. all this public service, and also uh, education is also one important element we pay particular attention to because mm -hmm. that's that's an important yeah. thing we can you know break the poverty mm. cycle. Lala, how about you? What's your vision for the future development of this village? Um, I would vision like. Hebian village in 10 years or 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, the villagers, they are very new. The new doesn't mean, doesn't necessarily mean that the villagers are coming from outside, but rather the villagers, they are, they are, uh, they are born and they're raised here, but they attend the college and mm -hmm. they got the modern knowledge from the university, from the urban cities, and then they c come back to, to decided to live in this village to together with all of the people here to develop the Hebian village. Anyway, we believe that the Hebian village will be better and better, right? Yeah. In the future. Okay, dear friends, uh, today we just show you around this uh, such a beautiful village called Hebian village in Xishuangbanna, a tropical region in southwest China's Yunnan province. Uh, it's very close to the border area of uh, border with Laos. As I just mentioned, this village used to be mired in deep poverty, but uh, in recent years, thanks to uh, the country's uh, poverty alleviation campaign and Professor Li Xiaoyun's uh, special experiment here, great changes have taken place here and uh, the income of the uh, villagers villagers has really improved. And uh, though, as uh, the, our special guest uh, said, though the uh, mode of this, this special mode can be simply copied and applied to other rural areas, but we believe with the inspiration from this special program, more villagers in China or even in the world outside China can seek their own special way uh, towards sustainable development. Yeah, that's what we have today. Thank you for watching. Thank you both.
Thank you thank for you. Share, you. sharing with us stories behind the program and yes. showing us so much beautiful things, so many yes. beautiful things from the village. Thank you. Thanks okay. for your time. Okay, see you next time. See you. I think this is the first time the